Welcome back to Accelerate and welcome to Ryan's Porsche 911 Carrera 2S. Yeah, now we recently featured a Carrera 4S and in that video you mentioned you'd actually like to try the Carrera 2. I did, so a subscriber has reached out and gave us this great example of a 2S and I want to know, even in manual form, if it's still the most usable supercar. Wait a sec, it's not a it's a sports car. Okay, we've been through this in the previous yeah. video. <laughs> the 911 was introduced in 1964 as a two-door sports car by the iconic manufacturer Porsche. Or Porsche as it's correctly pronounced. The 911 has an unusual recipe from day one that is still continued onto the brand new 911 models of today. A two-door sports car that houses an engine that sits behind the rear axle. This gives the 911 some very peculiar handling characteristics that differ vastly from its rivals. The 997 model is technically the fifth generation of 911 and is only the second model since Porsche went away from their classic air-cooled engine setup. In the video we did featuring the 997 4S, we did go into a lot of the nerdy facts of the models and things like that, but this, the 997 generation, was so important the 996 generation that came before, it was hated by a lot of Porsche enthusiasts because of what is known as the fried egg headlights. And to much to Porsche enthusiasts' relief, the 997 went back to their iconic round headlights and more sort of subtle styling, but still keeping with Porsche's typical sloping rear design due to the rear engine. I do want to say I drove this car just over an hour to get to location, so we have got bits of dirt flicked up over the side, so I do apologise in advance. So the main difference between this and the Carrera 4S, there's a hint in the name, apart from the 2S being two-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, and the 4S being four-wheel drive, the main difference is visually, not only are the lobster claw wheels, which have become an iconic statement of the 997 generation, the rear hips, the back end, is actually what they consider the narrow body on the 2S, as opposed to the wide body shared with the turbo and the 4S. The Carrera S is equipped with the 3.8 flat 6, which is an upgrade on the original Carrera, which came with the 3.6. This produces 355 brake horsepower and 300 foot-pounds of torque. There are many reasons the 911 is considered the most usable sports car. One of them is because of the practicality that comes in the form of boot space. And yes, of course, the boot is in the front. There's a lot more room than you would think there would be in a sports car of this caliber, and it goes way deeper than you thought. Actually, so deep that I will now demonstrate, because Kenny's put me under peer pressure. <laughs> that is how deep the boot is on a 911. I mean, I would happily sit in here. On I was going to say, let's just fill it with water and chill. <laughs> <laughs> There's your jacuzzi. Stepping into the uh, Porsche 911 interior, you're greeted with this emblem, not a sticker, the Porsche emblem. You're also greeted with the rev counter in the center of the clocks, which obviously is for a sports car. Speedo, it's in 25 mile an hour increments, which is only thing I've ever seen on a Porsche, which is really weird. And another really important thing about this car today is the gear stick. The Carrera 4S we featured came with the automatic gearbox, not the PDK. I, I think the auto in that generation, this generation, not very good. But this car actually has a six-speed manual. Being a usable sports car as well, you also have the Porsche fancy cup holders. Now, I really like these. They're a nice little touch. Overcomplicated, but hey-ho, it's a Porsche. Also, there's a lot of storage in this car. Um, there's the equipment you expect. You've got the um, adjustable dampening. You've got everything you need, you know, to use this car every day. Also, a sunroof without the tire headline in. And the seats. Now, you look at them, even my father said when I had the Boxster, they look very uncomfortable, they look very thin, but I can assure you they are very, very comfortable and very, very supportive. Now, the rear seats are kind of pointless. Right, I'm getting in the back then, am I? <laughs> so yes, the rear seats in the 911, as we've proved in the previous video, not really designed for full-grown adults. I was gonna say, I don't say men. I was gonna say, <laughs> so, even without the front seat pulled forward, it's a bit of a struggle in here. But for you guys, I will see it's in the seating position that Kenny and I would have it in. <laughs> now, I if the door would shut with your knee there. I'd rather you didn't check. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we, me, Kenny, and one of Kenny's mates, that we went out in one of these, and I did actually have to go in the back, and I can't say it wasn't a pleasant experience. But that's not why you buy a 911. I was going to stop recording here, but I thought that'd be cool. <laughs> Don't do that outside a club, yeah. wow. <laughs> now that we've run through the features of the 997, let's do what we've all been itching to do. Let's get out on the road.
I always get a bit anxious when we are thrown the keys to an iconic car. Not necessarily because of the power, not necessarily because of the value. Okay, sometimes a bit, bit of its value. But on times, it's because when you drive such an iconic car that's got such an iconic reputation, you almost feel like you have to enjoy it. You have to agree with what the internet says, what the world says. And when it comes to the 911, I do feel that I have a bit of a controversial opinion. So, you join me in the driver's seat of Ryan's Porsche 911 997 Carrera 2S. Yes, I know that's a mouthful. But before we get into that, I want to say a massive thank you to Ryan. Uh, Ryan is also responsible for some of the other cool cars we've had, such as the Classic Mini and the Peugeot 205 Rally we did. Now, Ryan owns BNE Vehicles. He does buy and sell some beautiful cars uh, at very, very affordable prices. So I will drop his link in the description below uh, to see what he's got on offer. And although this isn't for sale because this is dream car, as he likes to say, everything's got a price. So when you get into it, you get that iconic Porsche flat six scream and an iconic sheep on the side of the road. We are in Wales, folks. You get that fantastic induction noise that is indicative of the 911. And the great thing with this example, the only modification, now when we're doing reviews, we do like to do standard cars, but this modification I do approve of, it has, has a valved exhaust. So you probably can't hear much at the moment, but from the switch of a button, changes the characteristic completely and you go from your classy weekend driver to a bit of an asbo <laughs> and then with the flick of a button you can go back into sophisticated mode I said when I first started driving this, I've got a bit of a controversial opinion on the 911. I do believe Kenny shares that opinion, is that the Porsche platforms are fantastic. There is no denying. They know how to make a car and they know how to make run go fast. The thing that gets me, I am a massive fan of the front engine rear wheel drive. This the engine is not just in the middle like you'd think most supercars, uh, your Ferraris and so forth. This is over the rear axle and my God, do you feel the weight when you start getting into it. Um, at first, like luckily we've got a bit of experience with it now. At first it is a bit daunting because the, as you think, all your weight is over your rear end. As you are planting it, that back end is sitting down and your front wheels are wanting to come off the floor essentially making the front end rather light feeling and keeps you on edge. It's, yeah, yeah, I, and I know I've been told we don't get to spend enough time when we do features like this, although Ryan has been kind enough to give it to us for the day. I do understand that with more time and experience, it would, it would get better. And I know from a very good source, a good driver has told me you can use that weight to your advantage. I'm not a race driver, he is. So, how does it feel? How does it feel driving a 911? Because this is a dream car for a lot of people. And these days, the way the Porsche prices are going is still unattainable for a lot of people. So we're gonna have the valves open and just... <laughs> Everything on this car is heavy. The steering is heavy. The gearbox is heavy. The clutch is heavy. Everything apart from the throttle is heavy, which again is what you expect from a German car. One thing I adore on this car, as you guys probably know, I've got a thing for heel toe rev matching. And for the perfect recipe for that, you need very well set out pedals and a nice rev happy engine. And this ticks both those boxes immensely. And with that responsiveness of the NA, it's not even a heel toe. You can touch it with the side of your foot and it just works so well. So don't get me wrong, if I owned one of these, I would do a little tweaks to, I'm sure there's something you would do to make that front end feel a bit heavier in the corners maybe. But for an out of the box car, now I know 
a lot of people who are buying these things, if you're buying it just as a weekend car, you're not gonna be this critical. So to take out on the weekend, to just have a bit of fun. If you took a Ferrari out, chances are, people are probably gonna spit on it. No one's gonna spit on a silver Porsche 911. So we're in full Asbo mode. Yes. <laughs> I love the way these things rev out. As you get over 5k, it just wants to go more. Oh, it's surprisingly it, quick. It does, it comes alive, the it higher does. RPM, obviously. That's the beauty of a naturally aspirated is, they come alive usually the more you rev them. I do hate how like that front end, and I actually felt it skip then. Oh. Doesn't fill me with great confidence on this front end, I'm not gonna lie, but, you still want to go mad. <laughs> well, as I've said, I've been informed by a very good driver that you've got to get used to these cars and the way they handle. Here we are, I'll try and give it a little... Uh, yep, there it is. That's mad how like that front end actually is. <laughs> uh, go! Uh, but, when you're on it, it's rewarding. <laughs> oh, man. This is... Uh, uh, a little bit twitchy, right? <laughs> uh, I... I I love it, I've got to be honest, the power difference between the Boxster S is definitely noticeable, yeah, obviously. Yeah. But, there's one there. I'm gonna ask him if I can <laughs> jump in there and take that instead, to be honest, because as much as I like this car, personally, I prefer the way that S drove the Boxster. Yeah, now, before you all come at us with pitchforks, as yes. I've said, a very good, I know someone who races cars and he said, there are ways to use that weight behind you to benefit, and mm -hmm. we are not those drivers. We're not race drivers at all. So if you spent enough time with this car, that's yes, you. That's would. main thing. I think obviously we've literally had it for half a day and driven it well, well, half a mile. Yeah, myself. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think with a bit of time, and obviously if it was my car, I'd push it a bit more. And you could do. The problem is we. Everyone has different driving styles. Yes. Like I would be looking at different tires. I'd be tweaking the suspension. But is we got to look at this as an out of the box sports car. That you're right. You are absolutely right. It's not some of the tuning, the the highly modified cars that we've driven. The ultimate response you get from the steering, yeah. I think, it's hard for us not to compare. But it is an out of the it box is. thing in 2006 or whatever. Yeah. Well, that's just going back to that. Basically, I still love to be able to drive this up to a mountain like this with the comforts and the styling and yeah. the luxury of the car and then be able to push it around the mountain and then just drive yeah, it Yeah, because we had the conversation that a Golf R would annihilate these things up the up the roads we just went on, yeah. but I would rather go home on a Porsche. I was going to say, I'd rather say, yep, I'm going to go on my 911, so uh, <laughs> I think that's, yeah, that's 100%. Lot. That was the 997 Carrera S, the 2S. And I do want to start by saying um, I've put a lot of miles on this car today because as you would have noticed, we're not on our usual driving roads, which takes me back to all the criticisms we gave on the handling. We are aware we've had limited time with this car and we're on roads that we don't know, so. Yeah, I do agree with you. Um, I know I was a bit critical of the handling, but it's something you can immediately feel. Like you said, over time, you probably would get a bit more used to it. But personally, I do prefer the driver, the Boxster. Yeah. But overall, it's obviously a better car. Yeah. Um, and me following this thing all day, it, it looks and sounds so, so nice. These, now, I just had a quick look online. They start in around £16,000. Now, obviously, that's at the bottom end of the scale. Don't know what you, quality of one you would get, but for sixteen grand, you can you can be driving. You can have a nine eleven parked on your drive for sixteen grand. And as we said with the four S, if you put a private plate on one of these, as Ryan's done, you, you could pull you. up anywhere. No one is going to know. You, I would think this was a modern. <laughs> is it a usable super? Car? I keep saying supercar. I keep going. I was just going to tell you <laughs> off again. Then, so is it a usable sports car? Like I completely understand the hype. Uh, the noise, the feeling it gives you, you have got the Porsche quality. And, and the class. You've got the, the class, which the is class. a big thing. 911s, people who know, know. The average person probably won't. Just be wary of the handling. If you want to, if you're buying one to just drive out on the weekend. Do it. If you will not. If you want something to handle better than this, just buy yourself a Boxster. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> let's start an argument in yes. the comments, guys. <laughs> but yeah, we want to say a massive thank you to Ryan once yeah. again for giving, throwing us the keys to one of his dream cars, he says and letting us do our thing, but also a massive thank you to you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We will see you in the next one. Boxster! Oh, uh -oh. Yes! <laughs> right, let's go and buy you another Boxster. Then. Yeah, let's go. <laughs>